Steven Seagal has been in the gym with Alex Pereira. And if I hit you with this, you won't get up. <laughs> with UFC 300 right around the corner and Pereira headlining, should we be expecting spectacular KOs simply because he's training with Seagal? Let's see what they've been up to. All right, everybody, today we're gonna to be looking at what Alex Pereira has been doing with Steven Seagal in the gym. If you guys don't remember, Steven Seagal has taken credit for Anderson Silva's high kick up to the face. He has credited himself with teaching Leota Machida how to throw the front kick. He does the same with Pereira today. We're gonna to look at a clip of him breaking down the front kick, how he throws it. And just in general, we're gonna look at these other Aikido style training drills, kind of like block and grab and hit, things that you wouldn't normally see and talk about how effective they are. First thing I wanna say is, I actually like watching Steven Seagal movies. I have nothing against the guy in terms of his movie career. And we gotta be real, if you locked me, a glory world champion at 145 pounds, and Steven Seagal, who's looking pretty big right now in a room, there's a chance that I might not be the one walking out if we're fighting with no rules. But keep in mind, Pereira is competing under MMA rules and Aikido, even though I've done it for two or three years, it's not the most practical martial art in the world. So let's jump right in to see what Seagal is teaching Pereira. First off, we have the opponent attacking with a cross. Seagal parries and then catches the arm. That's something we don't see too often, especially in the boxing world, because you can't capture things with closed gloves. But with MMA gloves, of course, I suppose it's a possibility. So a little parry and a grab, bringing the arm across and chopping right into the eye. Seagal stresses it needs to be right into the eye. And although you're not supposed to eye poke, if you're going in terms of chopping or punching, yes, you can definitely target the eyeballs if you want. But in my experience, parrying a punch when somebody's really quick is hard. Parrying and grabbing, when this person is letting their hand, when you parry, right, they're gonna get knocked to the side. Trying to grab a high level fighter's arm as their arm gets knocked to the side and they reach him or back, I'm thinking somewhat unrealistic. I actually got taught a number of years ago this really fancy move when somebody throws a big hook, you block it, you capture their arm from the outside, you slip under, grab their wrist right now, you drag them down, you ridge hand them in the back of the head. As they start to fall forward, you palm fist them right in the face, walk around them, slam them down into your knee, control the arm and break it. It was such a brutal move, but one of those things where I go, ah, oh, I just don't know if this kind of fancy stuff is actually something you can pull off unless you drill it like a million times and it's so ingrained and it's all you know. MMA fighters, professional fighters, they can't do that. We have so many things to worry about aside from somebody just doing this. So these big fancy things, the kind of thing that Seagal is teaching, block and grab and hit to the face, I don't think it's that practical. And the other thing you wanna keep in mind is a fighter's body gets ready for impact when they're competing. Seagal is chopping this poor dude in the gym when the adrenalines aren't running right in the face. If you just do that to yourself right now, you're like, oh my God, that, that doesn't feel nice, that really hurts. Do that to somebody in a fight and see if they're gonna react the same way. You might chop them in the face and they'll get their head a little sprung up and they'll be right back in there. There's a different setting, there's a different thing happening in your mentality. You have that fight response and not that, okay, I'm relaxed, hit in the face, flight response. So it looks really good when Seagal does it there. Try that to somebody in an actual fight who's trained to get hit in the face in the wrong moment. I don't know if it's gonna work that well. Seagal then goes on to teach once you've grabbed and blocked, you can capture your arm around the back of their head and control them and then ridge hand them from this direction. I don't know if any MMA expert, somebody who's good at jujitsu or wrestling is gonna agree with putting your hand around their head essentially in a headlock is gonna be a good strategic move so you can hit them once or twice here because they're gonna get around, they're gonna take your back. All they have to do is get out of this headlock they're gonna be able to do that fairly easy. You don't see people in the UFC dragging guys down and holding them in a headlock. Maybe potentially if you're on the ground, but just controlling the head and not having one of the arms just seems like a recipe for disaster. And once again, on the same move, we see Seagal block 
grab and then teaching Pereira how to land a body hook. I'm like, you're teaching a glory world champion how to throw a body hook? Like, yeah, if I take my bare knuckle and I just do that to your rib cage, it's, it's gonna hurt. It's not gonna be a nice feeling. These guys have on MMA gloves. Again, you have dudes who have the toughest bodies in the world trying to teach him to change his body hook technique. It just seems, I don't even know. It just seems kind of ridiculous to me. Next, we get Seagal showing, again, the front kick. Now, his advice is we don't front kick upwards. You don't lift your knee really high and front kick upwards. You're gonna be coming straight through. You want a horizontal. You see him a lot of times pointing his hand like this, this horizontal line outwards. And I don't have any big problem with that. I don't think bringing your leg up and kicking at this angle, unless you're trying to go under the chin, is going to be effective. So I like the idea of coming a little bit more through the target. It's just kind of funny seeing him do it because Pereira's on the pad. He's front kicking some poor dude who just has this tiny little thing protecting him. But he's going up to body level and Steven Seagal, when he demonstrates, he's going down to the shin. Like he can't kick above shin level height. Maybe for Aikido, you don't bother. Because again, it's a self-defense martial art. Whereas MMA, we're taking everything and turning it into a sport. But again, that's the difference. And that's what Seagal should recognize, trying to teach somebody that this is how I front kick in Aikido. Well, yeah, you're front kicking to the shin. Try and front kick somebody to the shin in a fight and see how that works out for you. <laughs> They're gonna look at you and be like, what the heck, and just drop you. You don't do that. So again, I like his idea. We go through as opposed to up. That's just a good technique. But teaching it to somebody like Pereira, it just seems again, silly to me. Now the next one that really made me laugh is he starts teaching Pereira how to defend a front kick. Again, glory world champion, UFC world champion, how to defend a front kick. But he does show Pereira something entirely different than that I've ever seen. He says, we come like this. And he keeps going to that position like this. So the idea being, I guess we bring this leg up off the center line and you can do this as a defense for sure. If somebody throws a front kick or a spinning side kick, I can just lift my knee and bring it slightly across. So now everything from about here down is gonna be protected. Of course, yes, I'm standing on one leg and if they decide to fake and sweep me, I'm gonna be in big trouble. But if something does come down the middle, I've protected myself. I don't see the need to put my hands like this, and he's not lifting his leg very high. He's just kind of going more like that. So what, the way I see it is you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna block a front kick, and the guy comes in and kicks you anywhere above thigh level, you're getting knocked over because you've put yourself on one foot. The reason this high one works is you jam them. They come to throw their front kick and they get jammed about here because you put something in their path. But when you start just doing this, all of a sudden, not only do you expose your head to a big Brazilian kick or a question mark kick, but in addition, you're in this position where if they do front kick you, you're getting knocked back. Plus, if they go from their front kick all of a sudden to their punches, you're in a world of trouble having to get yourself back to a good protective position. And then next we see Seagal teaching him, you know, block the shot as it approaches, straight punch comes, I block it, I get my elbow against their elbow, except mine is bent, and I can control the person, then I step up and I slam in a sharp little elbow. Thai fighters are gonna be very good at this kind of thing, playing this inside game, finding these little openings, creating the spaces. But to be like, again, I'm gonna parry and control the elbow and then step in. This is very reliant on the person who's stepping forward, throwing the punch and not having the ability to throw and rechamber and cut an angle. You're just going, okay, you're gonna throw, you're gonna pin them and they're gonna do nothing. That's basically it. That was the big thing when I did Aikido. You have to have a partner who's gonna play your game. They have to follow along with what you're gonna do. If they start taking one little step out of it, all of a sudden you're going, ooh, this is not working as well. Now granted, I only did it for two or three years and I'm not an expert at Aikido like Steven Seagal, but I think it would be very hard pressed for him to do the moves he's showing Pereira if Pereira was here and just firing out a hard shot at his head high level professional fighter, I don't see this manipulation following it into an elbow working whatsoever. Next off, we have a classic 
Aikido wrist control move. I've done this one for many years. I've taught this in martial arts classes for many years. You get your partner's wrist like so, you put your thumb into the palm, fingers below the wrist, you angle and arch them downwards. Again, I don't know if this is something that would actually work. First of all, I don't know if joint control manipulation in that sense is even allowed in MMA. I'm not sure about that. I would have to check. But again, the idea that I can step forward, your hands are up, I can go one, two, three, and I can grab control your wrist and bring you downwards. There's so many things that are gonna happen. Like if you come towards me and you try and grab my wrist, you get two hands on this wrist, you better be darn prepared to get hit a couple times before you manage to get me downwards. And even if you do get me downwards, how do you not know the dude's gonna go for some sort of takedown? I like the idea of, I guess, a wrist control move. Again, I don't see it playing out so well when you have a high level fighter in front of you who's not just gonna let that happen. And it's a case in point. If I have somebody in front of me who has an extended arm, you know, they're fighting like this, I might go, oh, I'm gonna round kick the arm. I can like blast right into the elbow and break them, break that elbow for putting it out there. But by the time you start loading off a kick, all this dude has to do is that. You think it's gonna work? It doesn't work. That's why guys like Wonder Boy can get away with his hand way out there. Nobody's gonna kick his arm. Same idea here. If you think that you can come in and grab somebody's hand out of midair before they move it, they're not gonna let you grab their wrist that easy. And I just don't see this ever working. But again, I recognize that this technique does work if you get somebody in the right scenario where they're actually able to get two hands on one. Now, Pereira actually asked Seagal, what would you do if you were up against the cage and you have a dude shoving his face in, going for that cage control? And he gets a couple of little tips here of you, like, you know, taking the ridge hand and swatting it against their neck, like trying to bang against their neck with that. Again, we have dudes in the world who are slamming in as much power as they can with one arm. And MMA gloves, if you're not familiar with them, my gosh, these are small. Like I remember the first time I got one of these, I put these on and I went, ooh, they're about that thick, they're hard. They're not pleasant to get hit with. So the idea that a ridge hand to the neck is gonna drop somebody when you're already smashing them in the face, like there's gonna be a big difference. I don't think there will be. I don't think a little ridge hand to the neck is gonna dissuade somebody from being in that cage control whatsoever. But when you're somebody like Seagal and you've never been in an MMA fight, maybe you don't realize how tough these dudes are, right? They have so many times where they have to give up their back, they have to take shots, they have to scramble, they're getting hit in the face to get out of a bad position into a slightly better position. A couple little hits like that or a couple of ridge hands to the neck, it's not gonna stop these guys. Next off, we see Seagal teaching Pereira about how to step forward, control your partner's wrist and put one hand right into their face to blind them giving yourself an opportunity to follow up maybe with that low front kick that he was talking about or something else. Once again, you're having to have a dude in front of you who you can reach for it and actually grab their wrists. Easier said than done, right? It's not impossible. You definitely could step forward and grab somebody's wrist, but when you control somebody's wrists, it's not as easy as just, oh, I have their wrists. They can do things like, okay, take a little step to the side and throw a little elbow over top. It's not gonna be as easy as you think to just pin somebody's hands. Maybe if you're Seagal and you're 6'4", and however weight he is now, I don't know, 280, 300 pounds, and you got some good muscle on you, maybe grabbing people who are smaller, you can control them. But when you have people at the, the same weights, somebody comes and grabs my wrist, I'm definitely gonna be shooting out some elbows or creating extra space so they can't put their hand right in my face, or if they do, move them backwards so now I can hit them while they have their hand up in the middle. There's gonna be lots of opportunities and it's never as simple as just, oh, grab, blind, hit, and exit. Maybe in a perfect world, but not gonna happen in an MMA fight, especially a UFC title fight. This is all fun for me. It's fun to watch the dynamic. It's fun to see what Alex Pereira has, like his facial expressions, because a little story for you guys, I used to have somebody like Seagal who would come into the gym and he would show me all these fancy moves, the block, the thing, the ridge hand up to the face, the flip, the knee, the break the arm, and he would toss me around on the ground showing me all these awesome moves, but you never got to do anything back, right? He's just like, oh, throw a hook at me, and you'd be like, oh, okay, and then he'd toss you around. I wanna see Steven Seagal do some of these moves when Pereira is not playing his game. And Seagal at the end is talking about how dangerous hammer fists are. He comes over, kind of thuds him in the chest, hits him in the thigh. 
yeah, he probably hits hard and it probably doesn't feel nice. And in all fairness, yes, a hammer fist, if you can come down on top of somebody's head, it's disorienting. And if I hit you with this, you won't get up. I teach all the time in my fights, I exclusively throw my spinning back fists, which should technically, because it's a back fist, be this way. I always come with a hammer fist. If the athletic commission says, no, you cannot do hammer fists, only back fists, I don't even bother throwing it. So Seagal is right, coming in and doing this kind of thing. Yeah, there's lots of power there. Is it enough power to KO somebody by hitting them in the leg or the chest? Absolutely not. If you can come on top of somebody's head, Sure, maybe you can rattle them a little bit. The idea that I'm gonna come in and get a little chop like that on a fight, there's a reason guys don't come in and do hammer fists or back fists. It's just not gonna have the same power as a hook. What has more power? This direction through the tricep where you have not really much body weight you can engage because once you come here, you can't hang out there for too long. You've exposed yourself or coming from here and twisting. There's a reason these Aikido techniques are not utilized in MMA fights. They're very hard to do, they're not very practical, and they just probably will not work compared to the other techniques which are tried and true and have been used in the cage for decades. So it was actually fun for me to watch that video between Steven Seagal and Pereira. I'm sure Steven Seagal is an interesting dude. I'm sure, as I said at the beginning of the video, I would not want to be fighting him one-on-one -on -one in a room this big. Don't think that would go well, but take his size, shrink him down to me, put him at 150 pounds, and yeah, <laughs> I don't think he's gonna be walking out of the room, but I could be wrong. Maybe Aikido is something which is gonna take Pereira's game and put it to the next level. But we will see UFC coming up very soon, UFC 300. Got Jamal Hill, who's gonna be facing Alex Pereira, looking forward to that main event and all the other fights on this card. I'm gonna be in this room on Saturday bringing you some fight highlights of the entire night. If there's some big KOs running up explaining what happened. So Saturday night, check out YouTube, check out the channel to stay up to date with everything that's happening at UFC 300 and my opinions on the big KOs over the overall event. As always guys, thanks for joining. Train hard, I'll see you back here soon for another video.